What's up? So today I'm going to give you my pros and cons on the DJI Spark. I used it for about a month and a half. I know it's a little late, it's been out for a while, but I just really wanted to test this drone out just to see its full capabilities. So let's go ahead and do this. Just a reminder, I used the drone without any of the auto modes. I'm just, I just used the tripod mode and that's pretty much it. So when you're listening to this review and pros and cons, it's all manual controls and none of the stupid crap that pretty much crashes all the drones out there, which is the auto modes in this drone. So without further ado, let's go ahead and do this. I have some notes here so I don't forget anything. All right, so the first thing that I like about this drone is 1080p. Now, here's the deal with 1080p. A lot of people are saying it doesn't have 4K. Well, if your output is only gonna be for YouTube, most people on YouTube watch videos on their cell phones, tablets, or laptops. So 4K really is more for like professional use, I guess. I mean, if you're not watching your movie in a movie theater or a IMAX screen, then for me, 4K is a bonus, but is it a deal breaker, especially for this drone and how small it is? So 1080p for me is just fine. But if you want more resolution, then obviously this, is not, this drone is not gonna be good enough for you. But I think 1080p for as small as this drone is, it's not that bad. Next thing I like about this drone is the size. Bring it up again. It's so small. When I show people this drone, they're like, oh yeah, that's kind of cool, but can we mount like a GoPro on it so we can have a camera? And they're actually shocked when I tell them like, no, there's actually a built-in camera right there and it shoots 10, 80, 30 frames per second. So it's crazy how small this drone is. I mean, it's still loud and we'll talk about it later on. So people will still look at you kind of weird when you're flying this in crowded areas. But for the most part, people think it's like just a toy because it looks just like a freaking toy. So an expensive, an expensive toy that is. So yeah, second thing I like about it is the size. It's really small, especially when you take the propellers out. It's awesome. Third thing that I liked about this drone is the app. I know a lot of people have issues with the app, but I have actually used a drone without any apps, just manually flicking switches for it to config, for configure to like, you know, do all this craziness just to fly. Be thankful you have an app. The DJI Go Pro app is really glitchy and buggy, but for the most part, it helps you out and you can pretty much fly in seconds. It has GPS, it has calibration tools. I know in a world nowadays, you're so used to everything working perfectly, but for what DJI is trying to do, the app is really not that bad, guys. I have a, a Samsung A5, which you guys probably haven't heard before in the US. It's garbage, it's a stupid phone, it sucks, it's slow, but it's able to control the drone. And we'll talk about that a little bit more later. Fourth thing I like about this drone is the price point. Now, we can all argue about this like anything, but $499, drone only in batteries, you can't beat that. I honestly don't think you can beat that. Especially if you're good at color correcting grading, you can get some good image out of this drone. So 499 without a remote control is pretty awesome. But at the same time, if you are considering this drone, get the fly more combo. Just save yourself some money because I ended up buying the controller separately because I didn't get it. I didn't get the fly more combo earlier when I ordered it. Stupid mistake. So save yourself some money. The bundle comes with a lot more stuff. Get the fly more combo if you are considering this drone. Okay, next thing I like about this drone is the USB charger. It's really cool because I don't have to carry another charger if I don't want to. I know DJI sells their own chargers, but I'm able to just charge this thing with my cell phone charger, which is pretty cool because I don't have to lug around another set of chargers and I don't have to forget that. I forget a lot of chargers all the time, so having one charger for cell phone and drone, that's definitely a plus. The last thing that I really like about this drone is its semi-manual exposure. When I was first looking this drone up, everybody was saying it's automated. All the exposure controls are automatic, kind of like your cell phone. You can't, well, old cell phones, newer cell phones, you can manually expose stuff. But it just, you just go there and it hope for the best image and whatnot, use ND filters. But when I got the drone and I was messing around with the settings, 
It's very similar to other drones like the Phantom 4 Pro and the DJI Mavic. It actually lets you set the exposure controls as far as shutter speed and ISO, which is two out of three of your exposure controls. The only thing missing is aperture settings, which is not that bad considering you can change the ISO and shutter speed. So I was really happy to see that you can actually change settings manually-ish on this drone considering how small it is and considering how small the camera is. All right, so let's move on to the bad things about this drone. And this is probably me just being picky on some of these, but let's go ahead and hear them anyway. The first thing I don't like about this drone is the glitch. Some footage that I shot had weird glitches, like scan lines on the video when you zoom in. Now, if you're watching it on a cell phone, like I said, you probably won't notice it. But when I was watching the footage I shot in a 65 inch 4K TV, you can definitely see some of the glitch, twitch, whatever on the image. I'm not sure if that's just me or any other people are having this issue, but yeah, it's pretty freaking annoying. But like I said, it's, $400, man, what, what, what else do you want? So the second thing I don't like about this drone is because of the small size of it, the wind blows it pretty hard. I mean, I shot something at Edinburgh at Arthur's seat. Man, that wind just ripped this thing. I was trying to go backwards and it was moving sideways at the same time. So just because of the rotors and the motors being small, it has a hard time fighting high winds, like gusts of winds. So that sucks if you're in really high uh, windy areas. This drone, you probably don't wanna take a look at, but if you uh, fly around where's, when there's not a lot of wind and it's like nice all the time, then it's all right, it's fine, but doesn't do well in high wind areas. So like I said earlier, you will definitely need a remote control for this drone if you wanna go far. If you only use the cell phone like I did for the first three weeks, you're probably limited to just vision, like you have to have vision on the drone all the times. But when you have that remote control, you can fly a little bit better. When I was using the phone, I would get disconnected all the time because you, you know it's just connected via Wi-Fi. So I was getting a lot of disconnects in the app and I would have to actually walk closer to the drone to get the signal back. So if you're planning on like flying these pretty long distance without you know, seeing it, you definitely want to get a remote control. The next couple of things I don't like about this drone is no D-Log flat profile and 24p. Now I know we can conform the 30 frames per second to 24, but it, was, it would've been nice to have a native 24p. But like I said, being really picky here. Okay, so the next thing I don't like about this drone is the propeller. They're really actually really pretty loud considering how small the drone is. So if you're flying in cities, which happened to me in Prague, um, people heard the drone, it was really loud and they kind of like checked me out and say, hey, what's up? Uh, yeah, is that a drone? You can't fly here. So yeah, the propellers are still very loud, okay? But this is being picky. It's a small drone, propellers are still really loud. Last thing I don't like about this drone is the battery life, about 17 minutes. So basically that's just one flying up and then you have to like uh, pretty much shoot everything then land it, change the batteries, move to a different location just because of say 17 minutes. And I think 17 minutes is like perfect weather. There's no wind or anything, no resistance. So I know the batteries are 40 bucks. So I actually ended up getting another one so that I can have a little bit more um, flight time with the DJI Spark. Um, and like I said, if you get the fly more combo, I think you get two batteries right off the bat anyway. But yeah, battery life is sucky, but you have to admit it's a small drone, small battery. So yeah. All right, so final thoughts. I think the DJI Spark is really good for beginner flyers that would like to like get into flying. It has sensors, but it doesn't have a lot of sensors like the Phantom 4 Pro, so just be mindful of that when you're flying it. I think it's a great introduction to flying for the price point. Obviously not a toy still, it's really expensive still. So yeah, just keep that in mind. If you're a professional, you're probably not gonna wanna use this drone because of the quality that it gives with the glitches and stuff like that. If they can get rid of that stupid glitch in that video, then maybe you can make it work. But if you absolutely need 4K, then this drone is definitely out. So that's all I have for you guys today. Let me know if you have any questions. And by the way, if you wanna check out the links, I'm gonna put cards on it so you can see the videos I shot with the DJI Spark. Thanks for watching.